And one final tip, when you're integrating both sides, don't forget that if you're stuck, you might need to rearrange the expression that you've got so that you can actually integrate it. Also, don't forget that you've got your list of integrals on your reference sheet. So if you're stuck on how to integrate a particular expression, have a look for something that jogs your memory. But if we've got a choice of methods, we want to generally choose methods that allow the X or Y to kind of stay attached to the expression they're part of. Now, by the expression they're part of, I mean if we've got a differential equation that is a function of X multiplied by a function of Y, try and keep these parts kind of together because that will minimise the number of X's and the number of Y's that you've actually got in your solution. We want to keep them somewhat detached from the constant. Now, the easiest way to understand this is to look at an example. If we go to integrate this, we're going to change our y dash to dy dx. We're going to divide by our function of y. So we'll get this over here. And on the other side, we'll still be left with our x plus 3. So then when we integrate both sides with respect to x, we get this. Now on this side, if you're feeling stuck, it might just be because you're a bit rusty on your trig and you might take a minute to spot that that's actually the inverse tan of y. And on this side, there's two ways that we can go here. Whoops, that's dodgy equal sign. There's two ways we could go here. We could integrate this one term at a time. And in fact, that's probably the most natural thing that you'd think to do. Change it into this. Now, the problem with that is it's got three parts to it, but also it's got two x's in it. So now when we go to tidy this up and get it in terms of y, the tan of all of this is equal to y. So we can go ahead and write that down if we want to. We've got the tan of x squared on 2 plus 3x plus c. But as we go to find all our solutions, we could have actually made our life a little bit easier if instead of writing that down on this side here in place of this, we could have just taken this whole power here and reasoned that it's a little function of x raised to the power of 1. It's got f dash x out the front. So we could do a mini chain rule on this thing. Reversing the chain rule. I hate that expression because we're not really reversing the chain rule, but I think you know what I mean We could use that first formula on the uh, integral list on our reference sheet and say that we get x plus 3 raised to a slightly bigger power Divided by the new power plus a constant now these two things effectively are the same thing The constant might not be the same thing though And if our working is different our constant might be different But when we're finding particular solutions that all kind of works out in the wash but it just means that when we're on this next line, we would have said that y is equal to the tan of some stuff where that stuff only has one x in it. So it means as we go to sub in different um, values for x, might just make your life a little bit easier. But just be aware of the variety because if you're looking at another student's working or the work solutions and it doesn't look like yours, yours might not be wrong, it just might be different.